radiators in the window seats. And of course they had spotting scopes there so they could see the uh, wildlife, both indigenous. And what they brought here, they brought 100 head of deer and they had 30 white domesticated peacocks. And this always was a bird sanctuary. He also imported about 500 birds here from England one time. You see one birdhouse out there. They had 500 during their time. Some of them were actually high level, and some were heated. John Burroughs gave them the idea of heating them, that maybe the birds wouldn't migrate. Of course they migrated. <laughs> now, the uh, lighting fixtures in here are original as well. If you looked out that window, and it doesn't look like it now, during Mr. Ford's and Mrs. Ford's time, you'd see nothing but blue flowers. That was her blue garden. And uh, she had like 20 or 25 gardeners come in daily. So, you know, it, and it's hard to get new flowers, and she had a lot of money, too. Beyond that, where you see the bench and you can see the roof of a little pagoda, that's the 
early rose garden, early as opposed to the one that she put in here before that. Uh, very rare and very fragile wood. It was restored about 12 or 13 years ago by Etzel II and his wife Cynthia. It's rose leaf mahogany and it comes from Asia. Despite the fact that this is so fragile, you know what our Mrs. Ford was going to do? Oh, yes. I would never have, but Mr. Ford just got a cop window that before the fact never occurred. I don't think he's a bit as complacent about it. Do you want me to take a stab at the color she picked? I wouldn't have guessed in a million years. No, I would have guessed she had one, maybe. Uh, no, see, I would have said blue. Chinese red. Apparently, it was a trendy color. It never occurred. The lighting fixtures in here, by the way, are original, and they were sterling over brass, but you know something? They were polished so much that all that really remains is the brass. This is the table that all kinds of celebrities sat around. Uh, the Duke of Windsor, who briefly was King of England. Uh, Ed Edison, Lindbergh, presidents, movie stars, a Japanese princess once ate here as well. And you'd think that Mr. Ford would always give him these very elegant kind of banquets. He sometimes offers a cellar. Pardon? Do they have a wine, have a wine cellar? cellar? No, they don't have a wine cellar, no. No. No, they really did they not. Didn't um, no, they didn't. I'm thinking uh, maybe it's better for you to go through that door instead of this one. And are you still people eating?
but is this clear? some of this area without uh, anybody in it. We're coming. Okay. Uh, this is a, one of the log cabins that was used for Santa's workshop. You can come over here and look. And uh, it was used for Santa's workshop during Christmas. They used to bring, after the grandchildren grew up, they brought uh, children from the community out in sleighs like that for the day, gave them goodies, had them meet Santa, uh, gave them snow rock soup, which was really oyster stew, let them pick any toy they wanted. The reason they did it might be explained by a letter Edgar wrote to Santa when he was about eight. He wrote, Dear Santa, it's been four years since we've had a tree. I've broken all our trimmings. And I'd like a pair of roller skates to the notebook. He didn't get a tree that year. What's significant is the following year, <laughs> before it began, what we know as the Ford Company, and maybe they were compensated, you know what, they couldn't get their own son. They gave each other children later on. And that's the front porch where we were, with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ford and their grandchildren and Santa. The one in the middle, of course, is with his hands in his pocket, it's Henry II who came back from uh, the Navy in World War II to help fund the company. This one is Benson. He's, it almost looks at first like a girl, but what he's got is one of those deer stalker caps on. And he's the second eldest, and he died first. And then, of course, Henry the second. And these two are 